how to overcome wrong belief. We last week we talked about the facts of our about about thoughts. What is a thought? What it is made of? And we found out that thoughts are not based for subconsciousness that vanish without consequence. A thought is not merely energy that flashes through our brain and then disintegrates. Napagaralan natin dahil sa science, thought exists as a physical structure in our brain. It is a physical thing that exists in our brain. And each thought has a footprint in our gray matter. The gray matter is the neural tissue of the brain that contains nerve cell bodies. So nagiiwan po siya ng footprint. Kaya po yung mga negative thoughts na nasa ating kaisipan, it can destroy our brains. Our thoughts also impact our emotions, our mental health, and all and our overall physical health. Subukan nyo pong isipin yung mga malulungkot o mga painful experiences ninyo. Diba? It affects your emotions. Oh. Alalahanin mo yung taong nakasakit sa iyo. It affects your mental health. Diba? So anything na i-entertain natin sa ating isipan, it affects our physical health. Because our thoughts certainly impact also our spiritual health. It affects. Nakuha niyo po? Kaya ang tagubili ng ating Panginoon to Apostle Paul, sabi niya, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are holy, good report, noble. Meditate on these things. The Hebrew word lev can be translated heart, mind, or understanding. Okay? So the word heart, it also refers to the thinking or the consciousness, conscious part of a person. We also talked last week the importance of thought. Kaya ang sabi ng Bible, Romans 12 verse 2, do not conform to the pattern of this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It means your physical brain and body are changed or transformed by your thoughts. Nakuha po natin, our brain and body are changed by our thoughts. Because a negative thought is any thought does not agree with the written word of God, the Bible. And the positive thoughts that we are seeking out is what God says about ourselves, about others, about himself. And deliberately coming into agreement with that in our own thoughts. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng positive thoughts. You agree with what God is saying about yourself. You agree of what God is saying about others. That's why sabi ng Bible, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if you cannot love them as neighbor, you can love them as your enemy. Because the, the command of God is this, love your enemy. So you deliberately come into agreement with what God is saying. Now, in 2 Corinthians 10, 3-6, this is our warfare. Sabi ng Bible, though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy stronghold. So the weapons that the Lord has given us to wage war against these thoughts these strongholds, it has a divine power. And this divine power has the ability to destroy strongholds. What are these strongholds? Sabi niya, we destroy arguments. The strongholds are any arguments 
and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. So any thoughts that raise against the knowledge of God, that is the thing that we have to ano, destroy. And take every thought captive to obey Christ and being ready to punish every disobedience when your, when your obedience is complete. So napakahalaga na maunuhaan natin, this is the fight that we are bringing in. Ito yung gera na kung saan tayo nakikipag away. Okay? Uh, I heard somebody sabi niya, I have to ano, uh, kasi yung they're in the bur uh, parang ando na sila sa point na sila ay magbe-break na yung kanilang marriage. At ang sabi sa kanya ay ang advice sa kanya ay he has to fight for it. And then sabi nung nag advice sa kanya, kanino ko makikipag-fight? Yung mga asawa mo ay willing makipag-fight din. <laughs> so, these are thoughts that is in our mind. And we are commanded by the Lord to destroy these strongholds. Okay? And these strongholds ay hindi lang ito ngayon. It's been there for a long period of time. Nakuha niyo po. Kaya hindi ho ito madaling laban. So what is the impact of thoughts on the brain? There is neurons in our brain. It's called nerve cell. These are the fundamental units of the brain and nervous system. This is the cells responsible for receiving sensory input from the external world. Kaya nararamdaman mo, narinig mo, nakikita mo yung mga nangyayari sa kapaligiran. And these neurons are responsible for sending motor commands to our muscles and for transforming and relaying the electrical signal at every step in between. So, napakahalaga nitong neurons na ito na nasa ating nervous system. And this neurons is affected by the thoughts that we entertain. Kaya nagkakasakit ang tao is because when these neurons this were destroyed, wala nang uh, messaging system, nasisira yung messaging system. Kaya merong uh, misinformation na nangyayari sa ating katawan. So positive thoughts create healthy neurons. And the negative thoughts damage neurons. So, kung atin pong babantayan, kung atin babalikan, I mean, yung sinabi ko kanina, the thoughts are not vapors na nagdi-disintegrate lang. It is a physical thing. It can destroy your brain. Neurons are information messengers. Ito yung nagdadala ng information sa ating mga katawan. So, kaya nagkakasakit tayo kasi yung mga tamang informasyon na dapat madala doon sa mga organ sa katawan mo ay hindi ma madala. Because the neurons are what? Damage. Your thought can literally cause brain damage. Kaya, tagubili ni Lord na ano, Romans 12 verse 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Neurons that have been damaged by the toxicity of negative thoughts, they become dysfunctional, disrupting chemical messages from the brain to the body, leading to disease and pain. Kaya nakakaranas tayo ng sakit, nakakaranas tayo ng pain in our parts of our body because the neurons are what? Damaged by the toxicity of negative thoughts. The good news is even if brain has been damaged by negative thoughts, it can be rewired. Hallelujah. It can be rewired. 
Ang tawag nila doon ng neuroscience is neuroplasticity. It is the brain's ability to restructure itself when it recognizes the need for adoption. Kita nyo ang paggagawa ng Diyos sa ating katawan. Di ba? The pathways of the brain can be restro- restored, grown, corrected, and healed. So, papaano yan? Ito ang ating pag-usapan ngayon. How to overcome wrong belief? It is only by meditation, visualization, and affirmation. Number one, the importance of meditations. I'm talking about biblical meditations. I'm not talking about the meditation that uh, ginagawa ng tinatawag dito ng ibang grupo. Example yung yoga. Because yoga is not a biblical meditation. It is, their meditation is emptying their mind which is what? Uh, delikado po yun. It You can be demonized by emptying your mind. It is not about sitting in silence for a long period of time in uncomfortable positions while trying to make the mind blank. Hindi po yan ang biblical meditation. It is a state of focus, calm, and awareness. Naranasan natin po ito. Madalas, there are times in our life na kahit may ginagawa ka, you experience what? Focus, calm, and aware, in awareness. You are not thinking of the past or even the future. You're only talking about today, di ba? Present. This is a natural state that is very beneficial to the brain and body. Okay? Now, the counterfeit meditation seek to empty the mind. And when you see, when you when your mind is blank, you become susceptible and vulnerable to any demon that comes along. You can be demonized by just emptying your mind. Or you even allow the demons, the specific demons, to torment you by doing that. The biblical meditation seeks to improve on God's voice and feel His presence. Yun po ang uh, concept ng med- meditation sa Eastern. Sa Western, ibang klase ang meditation nila na itinuro sa atin. It's more on memorization of the Word of God. But if you go back to the Hebrew, to the Jewish people, the way they meditate is what? It's focusing, it's about focus and being aware of God and to improve Hearing the voice of God. The intentional meditation is a gateway to communicate with the realm of the spirit. Remember, we are spirit being and we are called to walk in the spirit. Yung Western meditation, I tell you, it's wrong. It's just only memorization. The biblical meditation is not just a uh, memorization of the word of God. It is focusing and improving our ability to hear the voice of God. Because that is our inheritance. We are called to know God. Diba sabi ng Bible? Taste and see that the Lord is good. You can hear God, you can see God. Because the Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It does not say that you're going to see God only in heaven. You can see God even today. Let's look at the science of meditations. Science have found 
that meditation reduces pain, anxiety, and depression. And a study conducted by John Hopkins University found meditation to be equally effective at reducing these symptoms as antidepressant drug. So, di ba maraming mga tao sa sobrang depressed, depressed sila, sobrang anxiety and pain, they were, you know, pinagpiprescribe ang mga doktor ng mga antidepressant drug. At karamihan, nagiging dependent sa drug na ito. And sa study nila, when people start to meditate, effective yung equally effective yung ano meditation doon sa compare doon sa antidepressant drug because meditation can also change the structure of your brain that's why it is effective because it changes the structure of your brain and meditation can help also overcome addiction and meditation meditation changes our dna Okay? So yan po ang science behind meditation. Now look at the, the scripture. Sabi ni David in Psalm 19 verse 14, May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord my rock and my redeemer. David is practicing this meditation. I meditate on your presence and consider your ways. Psalm 19 verse 15. Even Joshua 1 8. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. So the question now is how are we going to meditate? Diba? It is not just memorization. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 2. Blessed is the one whose delight is in the law of the Lord who meditates on his law day and night. Psalm 119, 97 to 99. Oh, oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers for I meditate on your statue. You want wisdom? Diba sabi ni David, I have more insight than all my teachers. See, teachers na niya yun. And he has more insight than them. Why? Because they meditate on the statue of the Lord or the law of the Lord. Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Okay. Bakit yun ang tagubili ni Paul? Because alam ni Paul ang kailangan natin. Alam ni Paul na if we meditate on the wrong thing, it destroy not only our spiritual life, even our emotional and physical life. So meditation in the Bible was done as an act of worship in the context of relationship with God. Nakuha ni Paul. We're not meditating just only to you know, ma-relieve yung stress. But meditation in the Bible is an act of worship. Okay? Meditating on God put us in a state of supernatural peace and of trust in the Lord. So when you start to meditate on God, you will experience a supernatural peace. That you can say, I trust my God. I have a covenant with God. I am a son, son of God. Anak ako ng Diyos at siya ang aking tatay. Sabi ng Isaiah 26 verse 3, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So, how can we experience this perfect peace? Dapat yung ating thoughts is stayed on him. And how can this be done? It is only by meditation. It is an expression that we trust Him. Meditation in the Bible is just like what we have talked about last time. It is chesed in Hebrew. It means believing loyalty. You are loyal to your God. You trust your God. 
Okay. Psalm 143, verse 5. I remember the days of long ago. I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. So another way of meditating is what? Remembering the blessing that the Lord has done for you. It's one way you remember the works of his hand. What he has done for your life. Diba? Okay, next on meditating, meditation is the science of visualization. Or in other words, imaginations. And I call it sanctified imagination. Imagination is not a evil thing. Imagination is part of our spiritual uh, being because it is our connection in the realm of the spirit. Okay, visualization is a powerful component of meditation. To visualize something is simply to imagine it. Lahat po tayo marunong mag-imagine. Tama po? O mag-visualize. And one form of visualization that we always uh, practice is what we call worry. When you worry, actually you visualize something. When you are afraid of or fear, you visualize something. Nakuha niyo po? Kaya lahat ng tao marunong mag, mag visualization Okay? Hindi pa nangyayari, natatakot ka na. Why? You saw it. You visualize it. You visualize it. You imagine it. How much more kung ang imagine natin ay yung mga positive? So God gave us the power to imagine because it is step one in the creative process. Man has been created in the image and the likeness of God. And one thing that man has is what? The power to create something. Diba? And it starts with what? Imagination or visualization. Look at the concept, you know, iba-ibang business concept. All of this are what? A product of what? Visualization. Cell phone. Any technology. Oh. Magbukas ka ng Shopee. Tingnan mo yung mga invention dyan. Yung mga product na binibenta. All of these are what? The product of what? Creativity of man. Because we are created in the image and the likeness of God. And we have that power to create. And when you create something or when you invent something, it is start with what? Imagination. Jesus himself talked about this principle when he said, But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. See? That's the power of visualization. Hindi mo pag ginagawa, nagkasala ka na. Nakuha niyo po. It does not only refer to the sin of adultery. It refers to all kinds of sin. Hmm. It's applied to every type of sin, not just adultery. On the opposite, visualization can be used for God's purpose. And this was the original intent of God. He has given us this ability to visualize, to imagine for the purpose of the Lord para yung kanyang kingdom ay ma-establish dito sa lupa. Tandaan niyo po, establishing the kingdom of God is not easy. Establishing the kingdom of God here on earth, when I say kingdom of God, I'm talking about the government of God. Being born again is not just going to heaven. Being born again is what? Entering the kingdom of God. Seeing the kingdom and entering the kingdom. Remember in John 3, 3, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And, and verse 5 says that unless a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter. God wants to bring his invisible kingdom to this visible planet. 
and we were called to be an ambassador of the Lord, citizens of heaven, to enforce the government of God here on earth. Kaya habang tayo nabubuhay, ang ating misyon ay dalhin ang kanyang gobyerno dito sa lupa in every pillars of society. That's why we we involved in politics, we involved in business or economy, education, we involved in family, di ba? We involved in uh, religion, we involved in media, science, culture and arts. Because this is God's purpose. This is what this is his original intent na dalhin ang kanyang kingdom. And doing that, it's not easy. And it is expensive to bring in the kingdom of God. That's why sa amin, di kami sa NFS, our mandate is to establish houses of prayers sa mga major mountains sa Pilipinas. One mountain that we are been uh, na target namin is Mount Apo. We already started to build a house of prayer there. At kailangan itong matuloy in a sense na may magmimaintain ito in a 24 by 7. Matrain yung mga tao pa paano maging magmaintain ng altar. Okay? So, it is not an easy thing. Expensive. Bringing in the kingdom of God. So we can become better at any action simply by imagining ourselves doing it well. That's why even sa, ano, sa, sa sports, tinuturo nila ito ng mga coaches, yung imagination, visualization. Hmm. They start to imagine that they're doing uh, it well. Oh, halimbawa, basketball, ano mang sports. Because in Proverbs 23 verse 7, ano sabi niya, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. We become what we think. So that is what we call visualization. You visualize. The first step is you meditate. Second, you visualize or imagine. Then the third one is affirmation. Okay? What is this affirmation in the Bible? Romans 12, 2 says, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word mind here means comprehension, reason, and understanding. Okay? And verse 3 applies now the self-affirmation. Ano sabi sa verse 3? Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith that God has distributed to each of you. Okay? Pansinin po natin. Ang sabi niya, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Hindi sinabi ni Lord, this verse sometimes natitwist ang meaning at ang sinasuggest ay ito daw ay self-deprecation or self-criticism. At ito daw ay humility. Hindi ho. Ang sabi ng Romans chapter 12 verse 3, it does not say to think lowly of yourself. Ang sabi ay ano, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Nakuha niyo po? The instruction here is to think of yourself highly but in the correct measure. Madalas, Tayo mga tao, meron po tayong tinatawag na low self-esteem. Example si Moses, di ba? This guy grew up in Egypt. An architect in Egypt. At nung sinabihan na siya ni Lord, na siya magiging pare, sabi niya, Lord, di ako marunong magsalita. Can you imagine that? Kaya ibinigay ni Lord kay, ano, kay Aaron, ang priesthood. Bakit? Ang katwira ni ano, hindi daw siya marunong magsalita. E sabi nga ni Lord, sino ba may gawa ng ano mo? 
ng bibig mo. Oh. So, this verse does not say to think lowly of yourself. Ang sinasabi rito, you think of yourself highly but in the correct measure. Di ba? Ang sabi pa nga, you are also to think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. So you have to think of yourself based on what? On the faith na ibinigay sa iyo ni Lord. So hindi mo pwedeng tingnan na mababa ang sarili mo. So you think of yourself highly in, a, in the correct measure. Ang problem naman yung iba, <laughs> kung hindi sa mababa, Sobra naman. Okay? So, the word soberly sa strongs, ang ibig sabihin niyan, an open place or a hollow thing or one in which an object can be hidden. Soberly is a place, an open place in the realm of the spirit. So, there is a place that we can enter in order to find that which is hidden inside of us. So, yun ang ibig sabihin ng soberly. Okay? While we are there in that place, in that open place, we allow God to show us who we really are. That's why you have to use now the imagination, the visualization na ibinigay sa inyo. So, affirmation is what? Believing what God had shown to you who you really are. And by faith, you start to agree with his assertion kung sino ka. mag agree ka na, ako yun, Lord. I believe on that. When he shows us, example, the areas of sin, what we do? We repent. And we exercise faith that we can partner with him in obedience and allow him to change us. Now, if God showed you something, He shows us as things that are positive. What we do? We exercise faith to believe it because it is really true. So we put aside the wrong belief we have about ourselves. So affirmation is what? Looking on what God, how God sees us. Because human tends to lean towards both extremes or either self-deprecation or arrogance, both of which are too twisted. Dapat dun lang sa, no, sa, sa gitna, sa tama lang. So when we allow God to show us the truth and we come into agreement with Him, our mind is renewed and we are transformed. Because I mean, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. It will give us freedom. We will receive the freedom that the Lord is giving us to know who we are. Because of sin, we lost this understanding of the truth of who we are in the Lord. Kaya napakahalaga na makita po natin ito. Kaya napakahalaga ang meditation, mahalaga ang visualization, at pangatlo yung affirmation kung ano yung sinasabi ng Diyos tungkol sa atin. We do this by deliberately thinking. So, papaano? We think and speak out what He shows us. We affirm ourselves with His words so that we can be transformed for His glory. You think and you speak out. So when we become good at doing this, it will also change how we think about others and enable us to affirm them according to God's word for them as well. Kaya ma-affirm mo din sila, Uy, anak ka ng Diyos. You are not a slave. You are a son. And if you are a son, you have a father in heaven. You don't need to worry of your needs. Why? Because you have a father. So yun ang lagi natin ina-affirm that we are what? We are sons of God. Oh. We are what? We are the object of His love. Look at John 3.16. Anong sabi niya? For God so loved the world. Who is the object of His love? Tayo. 
And the subject is God himself. That's why marami tayong mga prejudices sa iba-ibang tao. Bakit? We easily judge them based on what? Based on what of the negative thoughts or the experience that we have. Now, science of affirmation. Is there any physical and mental benefit about affirmation? Or we just say, we are just saying nice things. May science po ito. In fact, research has concluded that participants who were affirmed show increased activity in key regions of the brains, cell processing and valuation system. So kapag sila ay nag-affirm sa sarili nila, the part of the brain ay nag-increase ang activity. In other words, affirmation activates the reward center of your brain, giving you an added boost mentally, spiritual and physically, but also a better look on life and poss possibility for a better future. Yan daw po ang nangyayari when affirmation is activated in our brain. So affirmation is known to take advantage of our reward circuit. Number one, papaano daw? It dampen or reduce pain. Okay? Pangalawa, it maintain mental balance. And pangatlo, it build a literal buffer against pain, negativity, and threats such as threats to self-confidence, self-efficacy, or usefulness, and self-concept. So ito daw ay ano, nagpiprevent dito sa mga negative thoughts na pumapasok sa atin. Affirmation was actually designed as a protection mechanism. Okay? So affirmation require long application to be beneficial. So, kailangan daw po ito, matagal nyo nang ginagawa. So, kung hindi nyo pa ito ginagawa, kinakailangan nyo pong gawin na ngayon pa lang. Kasi ang effect nito is long term. It doesn't happen overnight. So, you have to affirm yourself. Di ba? Sabi ng Oxford University, they found neural pathways are increased when people practice self-affirmation tasks. Ano yung mga self-affirmation task? Okay, mamaya i-discuss natin. Specifically, it increases the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. Tapos usapan na ito last time. Ito ay ano, it plays a central role in cognitive function. It controls our behavioral responses. Okay? Itong prefrontal cortex, this is where decisions are made. Kaya may mga tao na hindi makagawa ng mga desisyon kaagad-agad. Why? Yung kanilang prefrontal cortex is not strong enough. Okay? So, it also controls our behavioral responses. So, this means that having a low volume of self-affirmation lowers decision-making ability. Kaya maraming tao is undecisive. Hindi makapag Na kahit simpleng bagay lang, hindi niya mapag -desisyonan. It's because mababa yung self-affirmation, yung volume ng self-affirmation na nasa kanyang isipan. Kaya kinakailangan, you have to practice it daily. You have to affirm it. However, when we do practice self-affirmation, the prefrontal cortex become more active it becomes more active. Now, this is now the biblical affirmation. Affirmation is an important tool to renew our own minds. And the Bible also directs us to use affirmation in ministry to others. Diba ang sabi ng Romans 15 to each of us should please our neighbors for their good to build them up. Ano ibig sabihin to please our neighbors for their good? You have to affirm their good deeds. Sabi nyo, sasabihin mo, Brad, congratulations. Praise the Lord for what you have done. Oh. You have to affirm other people. Build them up. 
First Thessalonians 5.11, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. The question is, how do we exercise affirmation in a biblical way? The key here is to see people the way God sees them and say about them. There was a story in South Korea, the president during after the war, mas mahirap pa sila sa daga. Alam niyo ba yun? Mas mahirap pa sila sa Pilipinas. Yung mga skilled worker nila, they went to Germany and other nations, nag overseas contract o uh, overseas workers sila. At ang ginagawa nila, pinadadala nila sa Korea yung kanilang mga kita. And there was a time when the president visit in sa isang bansa para mangutang pero hindi sila pinangutang pinautang ng bansa na yon. And the people that is working there, I think it's Germany. Alam niyo ginawa nila, yung pera nila pinagsama-sama nila at ibinigay nila doon sa kanilang prime minister o sa kanilang president para pag-uwi may pera. They did that. Even yung kanilang mga alahas, pinagbinigay nila sa gobyerno at para magkaroon ng ano, ng gold ang gobyerno. During the 1998 ata yun, or 2008, nagkaroon ng Asian crisis, di ba? Ganon din uli ang ginawa ng mga Koreano. They voluntarily, you know, give their ano gold mga alahas sa gobyerno bakit meron ganun silang patriotism you know one thing that the president during that time ang ginawa nila inutos ng presidente na kumanta ng isang awitin na kinakanta nila ito every morning para ano it's an affirmation of who they are kaya pag tiningnan niyo yung patriotism sa mga Koreano napakataas. Kaya nga may nabasa ko na isang sulat ng isang Korean. Ang sabi niya roon, the problem of the Philippines is not graft and corruption. The problem of the Philippines is what? They don't love their country. Kung tataas lang yung uh, value o yung pagpapahalaga ng mga Pilipino sa pagkatawag ng, ng Diyos sa ating bansa, uunlad ang Pilipinas. Kaya nga ay firmly suggest sana gawin ito ng gobyerno. Alam niyo yung awiti na yung bagong lipunan, di ba? Panahon pa ni Marcos ito, eh, pinapakanta noon, eh, required ipakanta, ipatungtong. Sana gawin ngayon. It's not about Marcos. It's about the purpose of God for this nation. Di ba? May bagong buhay may bag uh, may bagong silang may bagong buwa oh, bagong bansa bagong galaw sa bagong lipunan di ba napakagandang awitin and this is a good thing magkaroon sana ng batas every morning kakantahin ito ng mga tao that's what the Korean did it is it affirms of who they are they uh, nagpatugtog may pinakanta yung president ng isang awitin to affirm oh and then pagkatapos kumanta naglilinis ng bako ng, ng ng kalsada the key here is to see people the way God sees them and say what he says about them di ba yung song na yan actually ano yan prophetic yan kaya kung po pwede lang ipakanta sa mga Pilipino every day lalabas ng kalsada kakantahin i-declare nila na may bagong lipunan oh. to see yourself as god sees you and say what he says about you is speak kingdom identity over yourself and others so even though there is no law you can do it by yourself you love this nation sing that song Siguro sa mga local government eh. Sa plug ceremony nila, kantahin ito na merong ano, uh, conviction 
na there is a new society na gustong gawin ng Panginoon. A society na may pagmamahal sa kapwa, wala ng korupsyon. Di ba? You can speak. We are friends of God. Every morning, you declare, I am a friend of God. I have been chosen by God. Oh, you can speak, I am appointed by God. Hmm. Hindi lang yung tagadabaw ang nagsasabing appointed by God. Appointed son of God. We are all appointed by God. And we are all sons of God. Lahat ng mga naborn na ganyan at tumanggap kay Kristo. And we are bearing the fruit of God. Oh, look at John 15. Di ba? You have to declare it. We are God's handiwork. Oh, every morning. You said it. We are created to do good works which is prepared in advance for us to do. We have the mind of Christ. So napakarami pong ganyang word sa Bible na dapat i-affirm mo sa sarili mo. You have to speak out and believe. It takes time to displace all beliefs, all thoughts pattern with new ones. Kaya kinakailangan gawin nyo na ngayon. Because it takes time to believe. It takes time to erase. Di ba? Bakit daw lapis ang binibigay sa ano mga bata? Kasi pa nagsulat sila at nagkamali sila, may eraser. Bakit hindi ballpen? Bakit ang ballpen walang eraser? Oh. You allow him to show you the lie you have believed and allow him to give you the truth to unseat it. How do you do that? You affirm, you confess, you speak. Di ba sabi ng Bible sa Romans 10 verse 19, if you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, you will be saved. That is what we call biblical affirmation. Now, let's look at the process of renewing the mind. Number one, begin by ide identifying toxic thoughts, also known as lies you have believed or ungodly beliefs. These are thoughts that you have not agree, that does not agree, I mean, with God's word. So, tingnan niyo po, ano yung mga toxic thoughts na iyong pinaniwalaan for so long? Okay? These are the thoughts na hindi nag agree sa word of God. And you ask the Holy Spirit to bring them to your mind. These are some few examples. I am, ang, I am ugly unattractive, undesirable, people don't like me. Those are what? An example of those toxic thoughts. I am a slow learner. I have a poor memory. I make bad decisions. I am dirty, damaged, broken. Oh. Things will never get better. These are thoughts na andyan sa isipan mo. I will never be good enough no matter, no matter how hard I try. God is angry or disappointed with me. Oh. These are some of the thoughts na meron tayo. Okay, so I cannot trust anyone because they will let me down. If these things are lingering in your mind, it is now the time to ano. Lalo yung mga tao may mga trust issue. They cannot trust other people. Why? They might have a bad experience. Di ba? I will never be able to accomplish my goals or dreams. Now, next is Finding the truth according to God. So you have to open your Bible. You will need to get quiet and ask the Holy Spirit to give you statement of truth. Because the Holy Spirit will reveal to your spirit the truth about God, about yourself, about the purpose of God in your life. 
So you need to search the scripture and relate to your topic and turn those scripture in a statement about yourself. Okay? Okay, ito yung mga example na pwede niyong gawin. A toxic thought. God is angry with me. So look at the scripture. Oh, God does not look upon me in anger. Jeremiah 3.12, He is gracious with me. Oh, Isaiah 12.1, His anger is turned away and He comports me. These are what? The blessing of truth. You just declare it. Every morning. Para mapalitan yung toxic thoughts na meron ka. Okay? Next. I am stupid. Oh, the blessing of truth is this. I have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16 oh, Exodus 35.31 I am filled with the Holy Spirit and He will provide wisdom, understanding, and knowledge for the task He has given me. Oh. So you just make this statement. Write it down. Okay, ang proseso po dito ay you sit down and start writing ano yung mga toxic thoughts. Oh, may Google naman eh. Madali na maghanap ng ano. Meron namang online Bible. So madali maghanap ng mga uh, scriptures na pwede mong ipalit doon sa mga toxic thoughts na meron ka. If people really get to know me, then they won't like me. Uh, ano sabi ng Bible? God designed me for a purpose and there are people who need what He put in me. Or as I allow myself to be a unique person God designed, I will attract godly and fulfilling friendship. Oh. Those are examples of what? Truth na dapat ipalit doon sa mga toxic thoughts na meron tayo. So, you need a daily blessing of truth. Every day. Okay, you meditate on the word. So, you take you take the toxic thoughts list and say out loud. Sabihin nyo, I repent for the for believing the following lies. And I now break the agreement with them. So, isa-isahin mo. Lord, these are the toxic thoughts na meron ako. And I repent for believing these lies. Sabi mo, I renounce the lies. Then destroy the list of toxic thoughts. Okay? Prophetically. Just punitin mo or sunugin mo. You're just exercised by faith that this thought is what? Erase already in your mind. Tear it into pieces. Stamon it and throw it away. You can look. Or pwede mong sunugin kung gusto mo. This is a prophetic act demonstrating the Lord destroying the works of the enemy in your life. Okay. Next is take the blessing of truth list and put it on your room or somewhere you will see it every day. Sa CR, sa salamin na pag every time mong salamin ka nakasulat yung ano yung blessing of truths blessing of truth you declare it every morning and you believe it okay every single day for at least 60 days read the blessing over yourself out loud nako niyo po every day so 60 days dalawang buwan lang Gawin mong consistent and you will see the change. You say, in the name of Jesus, I come into agreement with the word of God. I declare and receive the following blessing and believe they will all come to fruition in my life. Okay? Read it out loud. Okay? Every morning. Every morning. 60 days lang. And you will find it for yourself that this is really true. Because it takes time okay, and commitment to renew your mind. This is how you overcome wrong belief. And the reason why we act differently is because of the belief system na nasa ating isipan. At ang sabi ng Panginoon, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when you remove something, you have to replace it with something. So ask the Holy Spirit to increase your faith and help you to truly believe this statement in your heart. You have to ask the Holy Spirit because you cannot do it by yourself. 
you need to you need the holy spirit and continue to do this for as long as you need to kahit pa mag more than 60 pa yan 60 days if you need to continue do it wala namang mawala sa iyo eh may mababago pa nga eh it is so life giving that it may become a daily habit that you continue indefinitely kasi pag 60 days na yan habit na yan hanap hanapin mo na and you will always and nasa kahit nasa ang lugar ka you have the list and you have to declare it put it in your cell phone o di kaya ilagay mo sa ano sa uh, sa cell phone mo na yung ano bang tawag nila doon yung uh, pagbukas mo ng cellphone andon nakasulat it reminds you gawin mong team ng bible mo you can add more blessing as you go okay so true biblical meditation is not designed to empty the mind ulitin ko po rather it is designed to enhance your existing relationship with the holy spirit Allow the Holy Spirit to engage with your thoughts and bring clarity to items that you have been pushed aside. I heard a testimony. Um, this pastor, may pinag ano sila, deliverance sila na isang tao. Nagaling sa isang kultong reliyon. And then, after he was delivered, nabuhay siya bilang kristyano. But unfortunately, he went back to his old religion. At ito po ang dahilan niya. Sabi niya, doon sa religion ko dati, naririnig at nakikita namin yung aming Diyos na sinasamba. Dito sa inyo, di naman marinig namin at makita yung Diyos, yung tunay na Diyos. You see? Very ironic. Kasi nga, di, yung pastor, di ba siya tinuturuan how to hear the voice of God? Kaya sabi niya, mas mabuti pa doon sa dati namin yung reliyon. Narinig namin ang tinig ng Diyos. Uh, even though they are not worshiping the real God, they're worshiping a fallen sons of God. But the fact is, narinig nila yung boses. E bakit dito sa ano? Sa tunay, hindi natin marinig. E ang promise niya. You can hear the voice of God. You can see God. Malungkot, di ba? Kaya, di ba, Psalm 46 verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. The word know there is ginosko. To know Him by experience. It's not just, you know, a doctrine or a something you know in your mind. But it's something that you know in your spirit. Oh. You can hear the voice of God. It's not about that God is not speaking. He always speaks. But the problem is we are not listening. And we don't know how to use our tools or our imagination to hear the very voice of God. It takes patience. It takes practice. And for you to be, you know, connected always is what? There's a process of renewing the mind. And the process of renewing the mind is what? Through meditation. Second is visualization. And the third is affirmation. There is a need to be at rest and meditate with him para marinig mo ang kanyang tinig. Two of the key words in this passage are what? Still and no. You need to be relaxed. You need to be focused. To, to be still and no. You know, the word still in Hebrew is rapa, meaning to cease activities and to be idle. Oh. When was the time na nagpray ka na you are idle? You're not thinking of anything. Today is Sunday. Oh, many Christians are in the church worshiping the Lord. But I tell you, this is what some of the believers, these are the struggles. They're worshiping the Lord. For example, I worship you, Almighty God. 
ano kayang ulam namin mamaya? There is none like him. I worship you. Yung kayong nilabahan ko, uh, naisang kayo kaya. Di ba? Yung mga ganun mga thoughts, it passes our mind and some of the time we entertain. Because meditation is part of worship. You cease activities and you need to be idle. You focus on God. Kaya nga ang sabi nila, it takes five minutes for a human being to be focused on one thing. Kaya sa social media, the shorter the, the thing is, the more effective. Kaya ako mag-iisang oras na ako, sigurado ko yung iba, wala na. Hindi na nakikinig. Because our mind is only capable of, you know, being focused on, you know, five minutes. Pero magugulat ka. Pero pag nanonood sila ng sini, di ba, ng movie na interesting, they are focused. Di ba? The word no in Hebrew is yada meaning to ascertain by seeing using variety of senses see to know means use variety of senses to know means to see to hear to to touch to smell oh be still and know that i am god so our thoughts are not dangerous or scary but when suppressed can become toxic eventually becoming unresolved and unpacified emotions. Toxic thoughts and emotion have an adverse effect, not only on our minds, but on our physical bodies as well. Kaya, tagubilin ito ni Paul sa atin. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are holy, good report, noble, Meditate on these things. Sabi pa sa Colossians, focus your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. So biblical meditation will refocus your mind, will and emotion on what is true, restoring peace. Kaya mo sa basa karana sa mga moments that we are not at peace is because of these thoughts that are passing in our mind that we have entertained. And now's the time that we practice biblical meditation. We start it by getting into a comfortable posture. Maupuka, go to your prayer room or your altar and begin with the following prayer. Sabi mo, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. I present myself to you for meditation and I struck my mind and thoughts to focus on you. Kaya diba sabi ni David, he instructed his soul. Sabi niya, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. You instruct your whole being, your mind. I speak protection over my mind and declare that my mind, will, and emotion are open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So do not be afraid that the enemy would takes advantage of you. No, he cannot. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is inside of you. Kaya nga, for me, the greatest doctrine in the New Testament is Colossians 1.27. Sabi niya, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And then you say, I cancel every assignment of the enemy over my mind, will, and emotion. I forbid every demonic entity in this room from interacting with me. I thank you, Jesus, for your protection and give myself completely to you. Have your way. That's a simple prayer. Allowing the Holy Spirit as you come and meditate on the Word of God, as you come to meditate on the purpose of God, as you affirm everything that God is speaking to you. Then close your eyes and begin to breathe briefly. You have to repeat it three to six times. Close your eyes and begin to breathe deeply. Okay? Next, you pass inward breath through the nose. Okay? Breathing should be 
in the nose. And then a slow exhale through the mouth. You inhale in your nose and you exhale to your mouth. You're like blowing a balloon. Yeah, do it six times. Okay? And then mentally take note of the sound, smell, and senses in your environment. You will see. You're going to smell even the presence of God. One time we are praying in one province. We are at the gates of that city. We are praying and uh, redeeming the land of that city. You know what happened? Suddenly the smell was changed. It's just like a rose of Sharon. Alam yung rose? Kahit ilapit mo sa ilong mo, hindi mo gaano maamoy yung, ano, yung smell ng rose. Unless siguro kung pipigain mo yung katas niya, at maraming katas, you can smell. At that moment, what we have experienced is the smell is so so strong that everybody, mm, ano yun? And then the seer told me, sabi niya, Pastor, andito po si Jesus. He has a drone sword na inilagay sa lupa. And there is a host, uh, company of heavenly host na kasama siya. So, you mentally take note of the sound, smell, and senses in your environment. And you will see it will change. Because the promise of God is this. When two or three gathered in my name, I am in their midst. God's promise is, He is what? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? He is what? Tabernacling in you. He is indwelling inside of you. Number two, remain at peace and allow your mind to wander. Remember, you gave the Holy Spirit permission to take you where you need. Okay? So, the Holy Spirit will bring you even to the even to the courts of heaven or wherever the Lord will bring you. Okay? So, you trust the Holy Spirit. And allow your thoughts to come and go unhindered. Okay? So wag mong puputulin. Just, and the Lord will just show you visions. The Lord will show you some things in the realm of the Spirit. Ito ang ayaw ng enemy na ating gawin. Kaya siya naglagay ng ano, counterfeit yung yoga. Oh. Tandaan niyo po. The kingdom of God or the kingdom of darkness cannot operate on earth without him or the spirit in them follow the protocol of God. Nakuha niyo po? Kaya, simply lang, tingnan mo lang yung opposite. Yun yung totoo. Yung ginagawa ng kaawa, yung opposite nito, yun yung totoo. Nakuha niyo po? Kasi nga, the enemy, oh, oh, example, the enemy cannot enter the earth without an altar. See? Tingnan nyo po sa palibot, sa palibot nyo, napakarami mga ano, altar ang nilagay ang kaaway. Napakarami. So, the question now is, where is the altar of God? Oh. Yesterday, we were in Dinagat. Oh, three days ago, we were in Dinagat province. We start to train the pastor there in the realm of the spirit, how they're going to build an altar. And one of the delegates is, you know, is a member of the group of Ecleo. At ang sabi nila, ang membership nila ay umaabot ang 1 million worldwide. How they did it? Sabi sa akin ng matanda, Pastor, meron din kaming 24 by 7 prayer. See? Meron din kaming watches na prayer every three hours starting at 6 o'clock in the evening. See? Parehas lang natin. Parehas lang. Why? The enemy cannot operate here on earth without copying the process of God. Nakuha niyo po? So, as you are seated in your room or in your altar, Allow your thoughts to come and go unhindered. 
engage the Holy Spirit in mental conversation concerning any of these thoughts. You ask questions. Because prayer is about exchanging of human ideas with God's ideas. It's conversation. It's two-way. Okay? Then at the end, God will give you the faith to believe on what you hear from the Lord. Then limit any verbal speaking to concept that aid in your focus and meditation. Okay. Important to you have to listen. Okay. And you have no obligation to speak. Sometimes rest is best. Allowing the Holy Spirit to guide your thoughts. Okay. Ulitin ko po. This is not the tawag dito. Yung Western meditation na ating alam, hindi po ganito. We are on just memorization lang. This is the meditation na sinasabi sa Bible. You have to rest and let the Holy Spirit speak to you and guide your thoughts. The only thing you can do it by faith. Tama? It's all by faith. Remember, meditation is not prayer, but mindful focus of thoughts and listening. Kaya nga pag meditation na, stop praying. Limit any verbal speaking to concept. You have to listen. You have to focus your mind. Okay? And number four, Allow the Holy Spirit time to respond and speak to your heart and mind. Kaya madalas, di ba, sa ating mga prayer time, ginagawa lang natin, nagsasalita lang tayo. After we spoke, we get out of the room. We stop. Di ba? Sabi ni Lord, oh, hindi niyo pa ko hinintay. Magsasalita pa ako. Prayer is a conversation. It's not a one, it's a, it's not a one way. It's always a two way. You allow the Holy Spirit to respond and speak to your heart and mind. Tandaan niyo po yan. And number five, continue regular breathing and remain at peace as long as you desire. Ano sabi ni David? One thing have I desired is to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. There is a physical temple in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, He make our body as a temple. That's why wherever you go, ang templo ni Lord, dala-dala mo. Nakawa niyo po. One day with the Lord is better than a thousand days elsewhere. David is a busy man. He's a king. Tandaan niyo po. He's a king. But he longs to be in the presence of the Lord. It's a regular thing that David did. That's why David, the declaration of God about David is this. David is a man after God's own heart. Not because of what he has done. But because of his what? Communion with the Lord. Of his has said to God. Or his believing loyalty to God. Number six, after a comfortable time of peaceful rest, you have to ask the Holy Spirit, what do you want me, what do you want to tell me today? What is my next step toward what you are showing me? If God show you something, what will be the next step? Any question you desire that might engage the Holy Spirit in your life, you can ask questions. Seven, remain in this peaceful moment and simply listen to the Holy Spirit if He is speaking. Okay? You can journal it. And if the Holy Spirit is silent, it's okay. That means you simply need to rest at peace in meditation. If He didn't spoke, okay lang. Simply rest at peace in meditation. 
So, importante meron ka rin ano, notebook. Write it down. Open your eyes when you feel the meditation has completed. Usually 10 to 15 minutes in the beginning and gradually increasing your time as desired. See, 10 to 15 minutes is very short. But uh, that's for the starting point. Simula mo lang. 10 minutes lang. Meditation. Next is, you do it 20. Then next 30. And then, it's, you develop it hours. I remember Brother Robert missed. He has a time with the Lord. 12 midnight. And he's being discipled by three prophets. Hmm. Can you imagine that? I think Jeremiah, Daniel, and Zechariah visiting him every night, every 12 midnight. And he has a, you know, conversation with his prophets. Some of us said, eh, di ba ano yon? Necromancy, no, they are alive. Di ba? That's not talk necromancy. Hmm. And you are not the one calling them. They are the one who come to you. <laughs> so, it's about Hearing and seeing God. Let us now come to prayer this morning. Tayo po ay manalangin at hayaan po natin ang Diyos mangusap sa atin sa umagang ito. And I tell all information in them to this thing. I declare healing over all topics that toxic thoughts or trauma cause my heart, my blood pressure, my circulation, and blood vessel, or my immune system. I declare healing to every single part of my body that was damaged by toxic. Bless myself with excellent and not good 
feeling aware of my soul. I tell my cortisol levels to drop to healthy levels and my serotonin to increase healthy levels. I bless myself to have a positive outlook that is based in reality as seen in God's eyes. Thank you, Father. Healing me and putting everything right in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. At tayo po ay uh, darako sa atin pong 